Sometimes I get the question, do you only collect Nintendo? And my answer is generally yes, but I actually do collect a little bit of Sega Genesis because that's where I got my gaming roots. Before I get too far into the video, feel free to comment below, what was your first gaming system? What was your first game that you ever played? For me, it was this system right here and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Love it. My parents just happened to buy this system for me. They could have bought Nintendo, but they bought this one and I'm really happy that they did because I do love Sonic and he holds a place in my heart and he definitely has a great place in the gaming industry. They just announced a ton of information from Sega, especially the kind of re-release of Sonic 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles and Sonic CD, as well as a few other things that's going on as well for Sonic's 30th anniversary, which are really exciting. Before I get too far into the video, Sonic had a 30th anniversary, and to celebrate the anniversary, Zavi has a new line of clothing and items that are available. There's a link in the video description below. There's also a code that you can get 20% off. So they sent me some of the items. Here we have a Green Hill Zone Adventure, as established 1991, 30 years ago hoodie. On the front of the hoodie, we have a logo right here for Green Hill Zone that's so nostalgic right there as well. We have a Knuckles the Echidna, one of the coolest video game characters of all time to me. Right here is a maroon t-shirt featuring the character logo. And we have a Sonic the Hedgehog. This is a sweater looking fantastic. You can see the Sonic logo right up there. So again, if you're interested in these, just go to the link below and you can also get 20% off using the code that I have. There is a UK website that the code will work with and there's also a USA website that has tons of items for Sonic's 30th anniversary. So check them out. So for this system right here, why did I then focus on Nintendo after I got this one? I had this one for three or four years at least, and I kind of missed out on the other Sega systems, for example, the Saturn. And then eventually my friend had the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast actually blew me away with the graphics. It looked so good. But when my friend who had it said to me, you could just rent a game from Blockbuster, bring it home, burn it, and then you actually own a copy of the game. For some reason, I just didn't think Sega would continue making game systems for that long, and I guess I was right. Even at that age, I had that kind of, I don't even know what happened, some sort of instinct. And then I saw the Nintendo games, I was kind of jealous of how great they were and how my friends had some of those, some other friends of course, and I started to get some really get into the N64 and never really looked back after that. But this is where my gaming roots came from. So I thought, let's start off by unboxing this, and then I will go through my 50 games that I own for the Sega Genesis. Actually, a little bit more than 50 games, roughly 50 boxed games. So right here, what you're looking at is one of the original systems that I have. We have Sonic 2 inside, but also it says here, really small bonus. It also comes with Echo the Dolphin. Now, I think it was only the extra cartridge. I'm not sure if it actually came in the case itself. This one does have the cases for the games as well. You see some damage on the side of the box. It is pretty old, of course. 25 plus years old. On the back here, we have some of the greatest games that I remember playing on this system, of course. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is right there. Echo the Dolphin. I'll go more into these games a bit later. Streets of Rage 2. I also remember playing a bit of Shinobi. We have the World of Illusion featuring or starring Mickey Mouse. Shining Force and tons of sports games on the system. There's also the Sega CD, which I never got that add-on. There's the Menacer, which is kind of like the peripheral that Nintendo had to kind of go against Nintendo's zapper, I guess, at the time, but also the Super Nintendo had the Super Scope. Mega Fire Controller, the six-button arcade pad, which I actually do have, joined the 16-bit revolution. It really was about attacking Nintendo for a lot of the things. So let's unbox this and see what's actually inside with my system. This system still works, as opposed to my Game Gear. My Game Gear kind of stopped working after all these years. So inside the cardboard box, this one, I don't think I could find the instructions or anything for it. I do want to keep this box kind of in the background throughout this video as we stack all the games that I have. So here is what mine looks like as I take this out of the box. Of course, we have the system right here, the iconic shell for this. There is an update for this called the Model 3, which is a little bit more streamlined and a bit smaller. And I cannot believe how much nostalgia I'm having right now for this system. I really like playing on the Sega Genesis. If my sister happens to watch this video, I miss you. She's across the country. I haven't seen her in a while. And we always played, always played games together growing up, whether it be Sonic. We also played games from Disney, like The Lion King, Aladdin, and even Beauty and the Beast and games like that. So I hopefully you're doing all right over there across, across the country. So these are the two games that this came with, Not For Resale, Sonic 2, really common, of course, one of the best-selling games on the system, and also Echo the Dolphin. 
I love Sonic. I'm going to get into that more. And Echo the Dolphin, I think I'll discuss the game specifically when I go through the entire stack. But these did, of course, come with the system. With the system, you also got one of the controllers. Really interesting button layout for this with the ABC. Choosing to go three buttons kind of away. It was a little bit annoying when you had to hit the A and the C button. It's not too far away from each other, but it makes a lot more sense when Nintendo did four buttons that are close to each other. And it makes sense that now over time, that's the standard. Even if it's on Xbox, on PlayStation, but it wasn't always that way. So much nostalgia for this. You also have the AC adapter here, and we have the way we connected this to our TV right here, of course. Really retro, really old school, going into the cable port on the back of your TV. Some TVs don't really even have this anymore. So now that we have that system unboxed, next up, let's get to all the games for the system. Actually, just before that, I want to mention, this is the wireless controller that I had that it mentioned six buttons on this one. So it kind of added the X, the Y, and the Z button right here. It did take up a few batteries, but it was really cool having this growing up. I noticed a little bit of an input delay when I was playing on the Genesis with this, but it really wasn't that bad overall. But I thought the D-pad was a lot worse on this, just for my liking. All right, let's get to all the games next. To start the games, I wanted to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog, then I'll go through the other ones in order. So here is the main series with Sonic 1, 2, and 3, which was split up into two games, 3 and also Sonic and Knuckles. A cool thing about Sonic 3 as well is it's not always reproduced or re-released because yes, there's a lot of issues with the copyrights with Michael Jackson making some of the music in the game. So I'm curious how Sega is going to tackle that with the upcoming Sonic Origins that's going to include all these games and Sonic CD, which I actually only have on the GameCube as part of the compilation disc. You might also notice that right here, this art is different. This one's made in Taiwan. The art for Sonic and the other ones is a lot more angry it looks like more attitude and edgy so there is another variation that you can get of the first sonic game that's not like these but this is what i've had since i was growing up so what's great about the sonic trilogy is everyone always says sonic is really really fast as a platformer however if you go back and play sonic 1 it's actually a slower game a lot of the game you have to wait for platforms sometimes it's unfair there's things off screen overall it's a pretty good game but it is nowhere close to as good as Sonic 2 is this is the game that I have the most nostalgia for probably in my life because yes it's the first game I ever played my sister would generally play as Tails in this game as well it was really fun. I like playing through this game. I enjoy it a lot. There's so many levels. Some of the levels are actually way too long. Act 3 only occurred once in the game and that was just crazy long for it. But I really enjoyed it and I love the boss fights in all the Sonic games. Then you had Sonic 3. It felt way too short because it was split up in half, but it has some of my favorite levels and some of my favorite music. The snow level in this game is some of the best music I have ever heard in my life. And also, you're snowboarding as Sonic down a hill to enter the level, which was just insanely cool. Also, I love the save system for this game, and all the special stages throughout Sonic was really cool. The special stages in this one, you kind of felt like you couldn't control. Trying to get the emeralds was a bit of a mess. Every time you touched an edge, it kind of swirled back around the other way. This had a really cool, like, running it, running it into the foreground this way, as you were in this tunnel, trying to get all the emeralds, trying to collect rings, basically, and not get hit, but Tails always got hit. And then Sonic 3, you had the collecting the spheres, moving left and right and back and forth, and it was very confusing the way it looked, but actually it was really fun to play those levels, and they have brought those back. And then in Sonic and Knuckles, fantastic by the point we got to this and this really did feel like a conclusion to Sonic 3. I was a little bit confused but it was so cool having the top loader option for that game. I love the fact that in Sonic and Knuckles you can kind of put games on top of one another and play multiple games almost like with Knuckles. So right here what you're looking at is the cartridge and the cartridge had this little top loading system right here that you could put up and then you could put in Sonic 1, Sonic 2, or Sonic 3. If you put in Sonic 2, you could play as Knuckles in Sonic 2, which was so cool. Same thing with Sonic 3, but in Sonic 1, I think it said, like, no way, or you could only maybe enter some codes and then get some bonus emerald levels, basically, out of it. You could put other games in the top of this as well. It was really crazy once you started to combine this also with a Game Genie, which I have. So you put the Game Genie in, then you put this game in, then you put like Sonic 2 in, and now you have a stack that's like this high. It was absolutely insane doing stuff like that back then. I never realized how cool the Game Genie was growing up. Maybe I'll mention that a little bit later in the video with all the cheat codes and everything that came out with that. So Sonic 3 and Knuckles, 
I really like the conclusion of this. It felt like a good end to the trilogy overall. I thought Knuckles was such a cool character and such a good introduction to it. And the boss fights in these games are really fantastic. The one that stands out the most for me, though, is probably at the end of Sonic 2. You have to fight Metal Sonic with no rings. And then after that, you fight a gigantic robot form of Dr. Eggman or Dr. Robotnik with no rings. And he's kind of moving his hands back and forth like that. And it's so easy to get hit. I never really understood the hitbox back then. But so such a fantastic experience. I love Sonic the Hedgehog. There are a lot of spin-off games. I don't have all of them, but one of the ones, two of the ones that I do have is Sonic 3D Blast. This I was expecting so much more out of it. You collect flickies, you go through these 3D worlds, which is kind of confusing in a way for some of them at times. It's not the best game. It's decent overall. It's definitely worth a look, but it's an entirely different kind of play style and I hear all the music coming back to me even looking at this imagery of the flickies right here that you're supposed to collect in the worlds. You can definitely beat this game. It's not overly, overly challenging. You just have to have a lot of patience with Sonic 3D Blast. And this one is in a cardboard box. I really wish all of them came in the more hard case shells, but Sonic and Knuckles also came in this kind of cardboard box style. Not the best overall. And then we have Sonic Spinball is the other game I have for the Sega Genesis. So Sonic Spinball featuring Sonic, I should say. This game is a disaster to control with Sonic. It's actually really frustrating. You can play this game and feel nostalgic for it, but I'm still going to say it's not a very good game overall. I don't mind playing it for a little while, but then you try and get into it and try and actually control Sonic, and it does get a little bit frustrating, so I would rather actually watch someone speedrun this game than play it myself. There are, It does have its moments. There are some really cool parts of it. It is Sonic as a spinball game, which makes a lot of sense. It just wasn't that well executed. There's also, I believe at least, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which I only ever re like borrowed from friends or rented from a place like Jumbo Video with free popcorn being nostalgic here, or a place like blockbuster over time. So those are the Sonic games, but now let's go through the rest of them alphabetically. First up alphabetically after the Sonic games, of course, is Aladdin. This game is actually entirely different than the one that was released on the Super Nintendo. I went to my friend's house in my adult life and they had a Super Nintendo at their place. So they went, what do you want to play? Do you want to play something on the Super Nintendo? We started looking through the games alphabetically. Of course, Aladdin's one of the first games we saw. I really wanted to play it. When we popped in the system, it was nothing like what I remember because it wasn't the same game whatsoever. I really like the one on the Genesis. I just prefer it. But both of them are really good. This was re-released with the Lion King for both variations from the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. You can pick that up for the Switch actually today. I really enjoyed this game. I love going through Agrabah. I love the bonus levels, but there is always that one level in a lot of these early made games that was kind of just a point where you were meant to game over, and that way if you rented the game from a place, you know, in your community, then you would have to almost go back and re-rent it because you would game over over and over again. I think this one is when you were flying on the magic carpet and just these hands are telling you to go up or down randomly and sometimes it says question mark. You're definitely meant to game over, I think, at that point. But I really like playing through this game. So many great levels, so many great experiences on Aladdin. It's not worth that much, but honestly, if you've never played a platformer on the Sega Genesis, this is a really good one to start with because this and Sonic, of course, are pretty easy to get into. Next up after Aladdin, we have one of the classics, of course. We have Battletoads, also was released very similarly on the Super Nintendo, as I said, but I also have Battletoads and Double Dragon. These games, to me, are pretty difficult. There's always, again, that barrier when you're playing through the game. It was a lot more fun with friends whenever you're playing Battletoads. This was one or two players, and the music in Battletoads is what is most nostalgic to me. They're not that expensive. The original Battletoads, this is the more expensive one from what I remember. I haven't looked up Genesis prices in all that much time. It does say Rare here, because Rare made the game. The company that made the Donkey Kong 64 game, Diddy Kong Racing, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and eventually, you know, some really bad games. They also made Battletoads. So if you're looking for some Origins of Rare, you could get Retro Rare Replay, or you could pick up Battletoads on the Sega Genesis. 
Another Disney game by Sunsoft that I played with my sister. This is Beauty and the Beast. I could never get past a certain point in this game. It just got way too difficult for me. And it just got, I think we were actually really bad at playing through this game. But I would probably like to play through this again. My sister and I would trade off controllers almost every level or every death. We never got that far in the game. We definitely wish we were using more cheat codes for something like this. Definitely a game that I don't think I would have played without her. So she kind of expanded my horizons with video games. This is one that I picked up in my adult life. This is Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. I still have not played this very much. I heard really good things about this game and I'm really curious to kind of play this one. There's other really good games featuring Mickey Mouse that came out on the Again, Super Nintendo at the time, but I've never played this one, so let me know your thoughts on Castle of Illusion. I heard good things, had to pick it up. After that, here is Contra Hardcore or Hard Corpse. This is such a good game, and it is pretty desirable on this system. It's made by Konami. Contra is known for being brutally difficult trying to go through levels. I have watched some speedruns of the original games, and people trying to go through that game basically without getting hit, without dying the entire time. I can't even get through a level without getting hit. So the best part of playing these games is definitely playing them with a friend, and this is an excellent, excellent entry into the franchise. Next up, there are a lot of Double Dragon games. I only had Dra Double Dragon 3, and I think I actually played Double Dragon 2 because my friend Mike had this when I was growing up and I borrowed it from him. This one I found in my adult life probably about five to seven years ago. I have not actually played Double Dragon 3 very much. I only played Double Dragon 2. These are really, really fun games, especially, again, if you're playing these multiplayer. I wish they were actually four player. It doesn't really make that much sense to me that they only did this, but it's really, really similar to like the arcade smash it says actually that right here bring my memories back to all this so fighting game obviously lots of fun it's called the arcade game for this one because it was ported over in some way over the genesis Next up, we have two games from Echo the Dolphin. This is one of the iconic games on the Genesis, and everyone always talks about this. We have the original, and we have the Tides of Time. This is a series that I just personally don't get it. I know the graphics look great. It's really cool playing as a dolphin, but when I first played this, I was kind of like, what is everyone talking about? Maybe I'm not good enough at video games at this point. Maybe I don't understand the themes or what's going on. Because I am not that good at playing Echo the Dolphin. And I also don't find it as interesting as I should compared to everyone. I think a lot of people say that the Tides of Time is the better game. I'm pretty sure that's the sequel. There were one player games, so my sister and I didn't really focus on this as much as some other games. And I was honestly just not that good at playing them. I picked up this one obviously a really long time ago. But the Tides of Time is something that I got again in my adult life. Not worth all that much money as a collecting standpoint, but it's just really cool having them because I feel like you need to have them for the system. Another game that is a must-have on the system is, of course, Earthworm Jim. I don't know why, whenever I think Earthworm Jim, I think of Sega. I know the games are also out on the Super Nintendo, and I only have Earthworm Jim 1. My buddy... Uh, he had Earthworm Jim 2, and I think this game is so strangely awesome. It says 24 megs of action on this cartridge, and of course, again, another one-player game, but this was such a weird game. You're literally playing as a worm in all these other areas. You can kind of lasso yourself onto certain things. I love all the worlds and the craziness of Earthworm Jim. Where did Earthworm Jim go as a character, by the way? Is he even in games anymore? Do they still make games for Earthworm Jim? But pick up Earthworm Jim and its sequel. They're honestly really fun little platforms. Formers, and you also have times where you could shoot and other things going on in the game. I really need to get Earthworm Jim too for some reason. Don't know why I have that. Don't have that one. Next up is Ghouls and Ghosts. Another pickup in my adult life. I honestly found this for five dollars, and I thought I had to get it. I'm not even confident this has the manual. It does not have the manual, and also it has this horrendous silver sticker on it that is literally impossible to get off without damaging the cartridge itself. That means this was probably from a rental store at some point. But for five dollars, I thought I would get it. Don't know how great this game is overall. Definitely have to get my hands on this. This is from 19. 89 32 years old that's insane how old this game is and i love how they have these plastic cases i just wish i had the instruction manual for this so something that i definitely need to get into and definitely need to try to play at some point next up is a gem on the system this is gunstar heroes if you're not that much into third person shooters 
you should still give this one a shot. This is one of the most highly regarded shooting games, I think, on the Sega Genesis. It's a blast, and I'm actually terrible at this. When I first picked this up, probably around 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I tried playing this and I couldn't get through the first level for a while. I didn't understand the controls fully, and I just don't even have a manual for this one either. I think I got a really good deal on this one. Nope, no manual or anything. And I don't know why I didn't spend more time maybe on the internet figuring out how to play this, but it was like 12 years ago. I wish I had another player playing with me so we could play two player, but the graphics on this and the gameplay is outstanding. I need to give this one another shot. I know it's one of the best games on the system and it is pretty desirable. I just really need a manual for it. So hey, if anyone has an extra manual for this, feel free to contact me. I would love to complete that game. Alright, next up is actually a sports game that I played a lot with my dad. This is Joe Montana Sport Talk Football 2, and I just loved playing football games and golf games on the Sega Genesis. It's one of the only games that my dad would actually play with me in terms of video games. I think both my dad and my mom really frowned on video games when I was a kid. They thought it was a waste of time. They didn't see it as a good activity, especially considering you just play sports, go outside, read a book, probably better things, but there were times where I just really wanted to play video games, love picking different plays and playing through this game. I should probably maybe try and fire this up and play a game with my dad one time again because it's been a really long time. What a player, Joe Montana. Next up with the bare necessities is Jungle Book, a game by Virgin. This is another Disney title, and I think there's 10 levels in this game and some bonus levels as well. It's kind of a really different game with really weird kind of controls. I never played this one a lot. I'm not confident I had this as a kid. That means I probably picked this up more recently than anything. I can't remember. If my sister happens to be watching this, let me know if we had this when we were kids. I just don't remember it whatsoever. So it's one of the Disney games on the system. There was a lot of them and they're really good, but we played way more of this one right here. Hakuna Matata, The Lion King. Love playing through this game. Again, it had that barrier level. For us, it was the waterfall with all these pieces of wood that you had to kind of jump up as Simba. Really difficult to accomplish. My cousin was great at it. I remember him doing it for us a few times just so that we could kind of advance throughout the game extremely difficult at that point but up until then we had a lot of fun with it we loved kind of you know growing Simba you get a new growl and things like that that gets stronger over time the levels were great and another huge breaking point for this game for anyone renting the game of course is this stupid puzzle with the monkeys and throwing Simba around back and forth and I did watch a video about how the developers intentionally made that part more difficult for the reason for people to rent the game over and over again you do have some bonus levels Levels with Timon and Pumbaa, which is really cool. You also have, of course, this Stampede level, which I thought was really cool to play through at the time. I love playing through this, but I'm still really bad at that waterfall level. Again, let me know if you happen to have any game that had that break point where you just couldn't get past it as a kid and it was way too challenging and way too difficult and you kept renting it over and over and over again. For us, that felt like The Lion King. Next up is another Mickey game. This is Mickey Mania. This one, from my understanding, I think the developers actually used animation, and it is from a Disney studio. Let me just flip this around. I think it is from Sony Disney. That's exactly right. And this was hailed to be the game that everyone was waiting for. I think it's 25 levels long. It is a fantastic experience, and I think this one, I'm wondering if this one's actually better than Castle of Illusion. I should probably look up reviews I think this is the better game, but let me know what your thoughts are on Mickey Mania, the timeless adventures of Mickey Mouse. That also reminds me of the newer Mickey games, like Epic Mickey and Epic, Epic Mickey 2. Those are really actually interesting games for the Wii that you, could, you should check out as well. Next up is sports game. This is MLBPA Baseball. And this is one, again, that I might play a little bit with my dad, mostly my friends. I'm not huge into baseball like other people. I don't mind it. I am a big stats guy and I like statistics, so I don't mind getting into baseball a little bit. The games for me right now on TV are just too long. I wish they actually had a pitch timer like they do in tennis with the serve timer. Sometimes, you know, the pitcher kind of box doesn't throw the ball and then the hitter kind of asks for a timeout and it just takes too long for the games to continue right now for me, for Major League Baseball to be interesting. When the games go over three hours, it's really hard to get into it. But this is a really fun, simple baseball game, of course, going back. But every year they got better and better over time. This one did have some cool features, of course. 
Every player in the big leads, accurate 1993 player stats, all 28 teams, a full 162 game season mode, which is cool that they add that kind of stuff to the more recent, I guess, Genesis games for sports. Next up, we've got a quadrilogy, sort of, of Mortal Kombat games. So you've got Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, and I also more recently got Mortal Kombat 3, but this is Ultimate, the ultimate fighting game. So this quadrilogy of games, really it's just a trilogy of games, this was so cool, Finish Him is what I remember, and this is exactly really similar to the arcade. Now, I believe these games had a lot more gore on them on the Sega Genesis compared to the Super Nintendo. I'm pretty sure. I think the same thing with, um, it was probably this series that had more gore. Mortal Kombat? Pretty sure. Let me know if I'm mistaken. And that's why a lot of people wanted to play these fighting games on the Sega Genesis rather than the Super Nintendo. I'm not that into fighting games. If I'm going to pick a series back on the this system, I'm probably going to pick this one right here, Mortal Kombat 2. A lot of people might prefer Mortal Kombat 3, but that one I have more nostalgia for. Even though it says right here, mature for all these, this one was 13, 17, and then back to mature, which probably means 17 or older. I know I was playing them as a teen. A lot of people get into video games, maybe when they shouldn't. I used to work at EB Games, and every time we sold a mature M-rated game, we did have to ask, you know, can I see your ID? If we were letting a parent buy it, we had to inform them about it. But I thought about my own history and my own life, and I was definitely playing mature games all the way back then, especially for the Mortal Kombat series. That was so ridiculously interesting with all the characters. I think this series was just crazy. I remember playing with my brother a little bit in these over time. Goro lives. I remember that quote and everything. And finish him was just the major quote at the time. Really cool playing these games over time. Not really sure where else to put them. I'm just going to stack the four of these right up there and we'll continue. Kicking off a run of sports games here, this is NBA Jam. If I were to only play one NBA game or recommend one, definitely play NBA Jam. Yes, it was also out for the Super Nintendo. My brother, I didn't grow up with him. He lived in another household, but whenever he came over to my place, we would try and play either tennis, NBA Jam, or sometimes golf as well. So this game we actually had a lot of fun of. This is actually one to four player, which is one of the only games I have in this entire collection that you could play multiplayer on the system, but I never had the multiplayer port. So I never really got to experience that in my household anyway. Anyways, look at this quote right here. Boom, shakalaka, which is hilarious whenever they have in the game. Kaboom, oh my, he's on fire is probably my most memorable quote from this game. Numbers don't lie, rejected, of course. This features 54 NBA stars from all 27 teams back then, only 27 in the league at that time. And look at how much higher over the rim they were jumping back then. Hilarious, love playing through NBA Jam. I would still play that to this day. Hey, it looks like it cost $10 whenever we got it. Next up is NBA Live 97. This one had so much more content considering it was from 1997. That seems so late. I feel like, yes, the N64 over there, right above Sonic's head, it was already out in North America. This one clearly has no instructions. But they started adding us so many different modes in these so many different moves in these as well. You could play new games. You could do two on two, three on three, half court games, three point competition, also shootout competitions and everything like that, which I really enjoyed, especially considering NBA Jam is more of an arcade game. That one was more realistic. And then we have some NHL games, and this is really my childhood with my buddy Mike. NHL 94 and 95. I thought I had a more recent one than that. So these games, obviously, just classic NHL, except there was definitely a trick. I think it was NHL 94 that this worked, I'm pretty sure. I also had 93 somewhere. I wonder where that went over time. Maybe I lent that to a friend and it never came back. Not really sure. But I think in this one, if you did a wraparound, went around the net, came back in front, and shot to the corner, you scored 100% of the time. If you use Pavel Bure, he was the fastest player, I think, in the league at the time, played for the Vancouver Canucks. You would score so many goals. I would win games like 31 to nothing, I remember that. And eventually, some of these games did have skills competitions and things like that as well. And of course, fighting and the moves for the goalies got a lot better. And we also had some, is this really Don Cherry in here? Maybe not Don Cherry, but you could definitely trade players and things like that. Ridiculous. So cool playing hockey games, and they're so nostalgic to me. There's so many people that still play NHL and NBA and MLB games and, you know, NFL games to this day. 
even on the more modern systems actually. Last sport game for a while, I swear. This is Pebble Beach Golf Links. This is what I played the most with my dad. He's really into golfing. I'm not a fantastic golfer just because I haven't dedicated myself to it quite as much as some other people, and I really like the aspect of golf. I'm actually pretty good at any aiming games, so I should probably be good at golf in the long run. Jordan is fantastic at golf. He played it all growing up as well. So this one, we played so much over time. I definitely have to get together with my dad and play this again. You had five exciting golfing options in this practice skins game tournament play versus 48 top golfers stroke play, and it says here match play play as well. You could also get caddy advice and stuff like that. And you could also have saves. I think I think you had saves. There was backup saves. Yes, there was. Right here it says so as well. And I do remember, oh, I really got to get back into this. So the only other golf game that I played growing up was NES Golf, which was way more simplistic than this one was. And I really did enjoy the experience of playing that with my dad. Really need to do that again. What game did you play with your parents, if any? Did they ever play video games with you? Because my parents, not much, but just a few of these sports games. Next up is Mighty Morphing Power Rangers. I picked this up as an adult. I always wish, wish I had this. My cousins had this, and I was actually shocked to find out that it's Morphin Time, but this is a fighting game. You have two characters fighting against one another. I thought it was going to be like an action game or something like that. So again, fighting games, this one's actually a blast. I do remember playing it a lot at my cousins, but not that much, but I had to pick it up. Not that much recently, I should say, but I had to pick that up for my collection now that I'm a little bit older. And hey, we definitely have more expendable income now that I'm an adult. This one is one of the best games on this system, Rocket Knight Adventures. I'm again not that great at this, and I wish I had this growing up, but when I got it, I actually had to look up YouTube videos, how-to videos, and walk-through videos to get better at this game, because I thought I would just play it and be instantly good at it, definitely not the case. Huge learning curve for me anyways for this game. It is made by Konami. It also says you can order your official t-shirt. Now, introducing the mightiest mammal ever to rocket to stardom. That's kind of funny because, of course, Sonic is also a blue character that you can use. The graphics in this game have some scrolling that look really interesting as well. Look at all the text on this thing. Definitely selling this game for it. It is fantastic. It's one of the desirable games on the system. I think you should definitely pick this up if you've never played it before. I'm pretty sure there's a sequel to this at some point. I feel like Sparkster maybe looks really similar to this or it has the same idea or is a sequel prequel. I don't know how I don't know that information a little bit better. Another desirable game for the system, this is Shinobi 3. This one does come complete in really good condition. I paid, I think, $20 for this like eight years ago or so. It's been a little bit while. This is Return of the Ninja Master. Obviously, this is a ninja game that I have not played enough. It's a stealth game from my experience, at least watching this be played a few times before. I know there's at least 20 levels. I think there's like 20 to 25 levels in this, and there are bosses that are extremely large in this game as well. It graphically looks fantastic if you want to take a look at some gameplay for this as well. Definitely would recommend the Shinobi game and it is a little bit more expensive now. Speaking of expensive Genesis games, I have Splatterhouse 2. I wish I had Splatterhouse 3. This is a horror game, I want to call it. I think in this one your girlfriend is kidnapped, girlfriend Jennifer I think her name is, and you're trying to save her. The HUD when you play through this game takes up so much space on the screen, but it really is an interesting experience, and I'm saying that for someone who doesn't love the horror genre. Splatterhouse 3, last time I looked, is even more expensive than this one. I wish I picked that up over time, but I don't quite have it yet. I'm going to keep my eyes out for it at some point. Hopefully I run into it. I'm surprised that this one was made by Namco. That's kind of really interesting. Now here's a game I got at the flea market for like 5 or $10 as a kid, Star Trek Deep Space Nine Crossroads of Time. I wanted to get this to play a different game other than sports with my father, and it just never worked. We brought it home, we put it in the system, it wouldn't work. We cleaned the game, it wouldn't work. We cleaned the system, it would not work. Still to this day, I have never played this. Let me know if, you have that, if you've ever had that experience where maybe you bought a game secondhand, maybe you bought it at a flea market like I did, you brought it home, excited to play, and it never ever worked. I couldn't return it either. We were going to a cottage at the time, we never went back to the flea market, so that just never happened. No clue how good this game is or how bad it is. Wish it worked so I could at least have experienced it at some point. Never did kind of regret it. 
Next up are two fighting games. This is Street Fighter. Of course, in this game, the antagonist is M. Bison. These games are still made to this day. I like playing Street Fighter 2 and also Mortal Kombat 2 if I'm going to play a fighting game. There's not as many characters, I think, in this game as more the modern ones. They're still making all these games for these franchises. This one was only 13 and up, so it wasn't as gory as the other ones. And really interesting that we had the original. It's probably supposed to be in this order. And then also the special champion edition. The Champion Edition, these are made by Capcom by the way, this one has, what, from the corners of the globe, 12 of the toughest fighters ever. I thought this one was just like faster gameplay or something like that. Features a new group battle mode only for the Sega Genesis, true arcade action, 12 unique fighters, two games in one, play Champion Edition or the new Hyper Mode. That's exactly right, so I think we could play a little bit faster in Hyper Mode. Let me know what your thoughts are, and if you are a Mortal Kombat fan, or are you a Street Fighter fan, if you only had to pick one, which would you choose? Next up is Streets of Rage. Fantastic kind of brawler that you could play with friends. I only have Streets of Rage 1 and Streets of Rage 3. I don't have Streets of Rage 2. I think 3 is the more expensive one of this trilogy. This is definitely a game you can play with a buddy and have a ton of fun. Um, Jordan and I were playing through Turtles in Time and that really made me think of this one and maybe playing through this with a friend. I think this is Streets of Rage is more of a brawler on the left here and I think on the right it looks a little bit different but I remember trying to go off hordes of enemies and trying to kill all of them and trying to stay alive for as long as possible whenever I was playing through this and I really do want to experience this again so Jordan if you're watching here's your invitation maybe we can play Streets of Rage together really fun to kind of branch out and play more games next up is a game that I heard is terrible in terms of cover art this has one of the worst cover arts for any game in the history of gaming look at how ridiculous this looks compared to the insanely cool gameplay of Strider this game, I think, is also out on the Super Nintendo, but it's not nearly as good. It's actually way better on the Genesis. Battle alluring Amazons who sling vicious boomerangs. You can also feel your biceps burst as you grapple with snarling muscle men. Gee, cling to battleship bulkheads, leap from Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's Strider, the master awaits. This is basically take on explosive arcade hit your Strider, a crunching hulk of muscle with a grappling hook and laser sword. The laser sword is really what sells this game for everyone, and the graphics are actually really quite good. If you're going to try the game, though, definitely try it on the Genesis. I hear that's the definitive version to try out. This is a game right here, Subterranea. I thought it was a rare game. I mistaken it. I mistaked it for something else. I picked it up for five dollars or three dollars at a resell store, a reuse kind of store, and it just is not at all for me. It's not what I was looking for. It's definitely not a rare game whatsoever. Can you handle the pressure? There's aliens invading, and you are trying to kill all of them as this like top-down shooter, which is kind of to me. I thought this was a lot like Ikaruga, which when I bought it, that's what I was thinking of, anyways. Ikaruga is a Great shooting game, top down for the GameCube actually, that's one of the best on the system. Next up is a racing game, I forgot all about this. This is Art and Senna's Super Monaco GP2, we just call it Super Monaco, Super Monaco GP2 overall, that's why alphabetically it's here and not with A for Art and Senna. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But I remember all of the courses in this game. I've got to replay them. I remember all the quotes that you hear kind of while you're racing and how perfect you're trying to be on each lap. I really need to replay this one. I'm not even sure if it's a great game overall. I'm just really nostalgic for it. Came out in 1992. I remember the announcer even saying, final lap. And again, this is a game that I could kind of maybe convince my dad to play occasionally with me, but not maybe all that often. Just going to put that one right down here. Almost running out of room. Oh, Tailspin right here. Disney's Tailspin as well. I did watch a replay of this and I put it back in my system myself. My sister and I tried beating this and playing through this as well. This is actually a pretty hard game, but it's great as two players. You can play through the entire adventure with Kit and Baloo. And I love trying to play through this with my sister. And I really got to retry that at some point again, whenever we're together. There are eight exotic locations. We usually ended the game probably by world four or level like four or five or something like that really difficult as well to try and figure out what's going on before the internet it's been a really long time coming with the internet helping with video games actually
Now this is a game my cousins had that I really wanted to get more recently. So this is Taz in Escape from Mars. So cool to have Taz. I remember trying to play this, I think, at my friend's house as well. Tyler it was back in the day. Wonder where all these people are in my life now. It's kind of sad that I'm not friends with them, but I am friends with some of my elementary school friends still, which is ridiculous. So this game, I don't have a lot of memory for this. Now that I look at all these pictures right here, I think we were playing something else. We were probably playing Ren and Stimpy back then. He had it and I didn't have Ren and Stimpy. And this one, again, I couldn't get it to work on my system and I'm still struggling to get it to work. So I hope it does. Of course, games that are a lot older, they might just stop working over time. So I really want to rebuy that one. What drives me nuts about this one, because it's the greatest hits for the Sega Genesis, it doesn't say the game on either side. So when you have this on your shelf, you're not even sure what game it is. That's ridiculous. Next up, a game that was re-released for the Nintendo Switch. This is Toe Jam and Earl. This one is Panic on Funkotron. The box for this one on the Nintendo Switch is absolutely ridiculous in its color scheme and everything. Look at even the way that they're both running. Toe Jam and Earl. Again, not part of my childhood. I got this one more recently. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. And if you were able to pick up the Switch re-release, I wonder if that was by Limited Run Games or someone else that made the reprint for this. I remember my local shop had a collector's edition of it in, and I still didn't want to pick it up for some reason. And I just think it's too overpriced right now. The game that I always played with my brother, basically right here, we're both into tennis. This is Wimbledon Championship Tennis. If I had to pick a tennis game today, I'm playing Mario Tennis. I wish it was better on the Switch and on the Wii U, because honestly, the games on the GameCube and the N64 for Mario Tennis are fantastic. But before that, I was always playing this game. My brother was really into Sampras and Agassi and got me into watching tennis and playing tennis. If he's ever around, we usually do still go to the tennis court. I still have my racket and everything like that. And today, I'm a huge Federer fan. Nadal's fantastic. Of course, Djokovic. Uh, I really like how Andreescu got the first Canadian championship. So huge shout out to her as well. But my brother and I played this all the time as well. Four player, but I never experienced it because I didn't have that multi-tap for the system or whatever it was called. Those are all my games that have a box. Most of them have the manual, but not all of them. I do have a handful of games I got cartridge only. I try to get Genesis games always complete, or at least with the box, because these harder shell cases, they really lasted over time, unlike cardboard. A few of these are cardboard, but generally you didn't really see people recycling them, and because it was a hard plastic case, more people were inclined to keep them, kind of like VHS tape cases, I guess, as well. But I did buy some that were only cartridge only. This one I bought more recently, it's called Comics Zone. It's a comic book brought to life and truly some of the best graphics you will ever see from this generation. You definitely have to look it up if you've never seen it before. If you happen to see it in the wild, try and get it. I'm definitely going to try and find it complete because it is that fantastic comic zone. Next up is Risk, a game I bought at that flea market. My dad always warned me that he almost ruined some friendships playing real games of Risk in real life, but I really wanted to play it. I enjoyed this one a lot. You can kind of just get the game of Risk, of course, on your handheld phone or even on your iPad or anything like that to this day. Road Rash, I loved this series growing up. You're riding a motorcycle, you're trying to kick other people off their motorcycles and win races. You can also even have people with chains trying to hit each other with motorcycles. Very vicious but ridiculously fun. I would always get a motorcycle that eventually was way too fast and I couldn't control it whatsoever. Then we have Thunder Force 3, another game that I thought would be fantastic and I definitely wanted to pick up. I don't think this is the rare one. I'm not really exactly sure. I thought I thought it was rare, but it's not. Haven't really played this one that much overall, but I just bought it off word of mouth. Not really sure. Let me know. And then here is a six pack that my... my Sister and I used to play a lot because it had columns on it, and she was really good at that puzzle game, and I wasn't. So this one has Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Revenge of Shinobi, Columns, and Super Hang On. I loved Super Hang On. I forgot all about that game as well. Another motorcycle racing game. I remember the horizon kind of changing color over time. Let me know what your thoughts are on these six packs. And I always wondered, is this authentic or not? I thought it was. I thought it was just released later in the Sega kind of life cycle, maybe at a higher price with that. And the other cartridge that I have to mention is the Game Genie. So this allowed you to put other games on top, of course. And then you could play with different codes as long as you had a book. Now you can look up all the codes on the internet. 
So what we had growing up was this book right here. If you flip through it, you have all of these pages that tell you where to go and go to all these different games that had all these different codes like restoring or invincibility or all that kind of stuff, which is really fun. I'm wondering what the ones we used for Sonic the Hedgehog. So this is Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on page 172. Let's just flip to it really quickly and see what the codes were for the original Sonic game. You can see I even highlighted some of them as a kid. You could have each ring count as eight. You could have infinite lives, the level select menu, start with five chaos emeralds, once invincible, stay invincible, and also like this master code, you must enter that first before anything else. I even highlighted this, which is so cool for my childhood. Then we eventually found another book. I'm not sure where we got this one, but it had different games in it. And I think this one had Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in it right down there, page 18. I'm curious if I marked this one up as well on page 18. Let's see. I did. Right there, you can see what I circled and everything like that, which is kind of cool. Each ring is worth multiples. Start with 99 lives was popular amongst us. Jump a lot higher. Sonic is invincible. Once invincible, stay invincible. And don't lose any rings when you're hit. Let me know what your thoughts are on Game Genies and if you ever use them or something similar on any system when you were growing up. Not only did I grow up with the Sega Genesis, but I also grew up with the Sega Game Gear. I thought this was so cool because it had color on the system, but look at how gigantic this is. It was worse because I also had the battery pack attached to it. Rather than using six batteries, I think, to run the system, you could kind of use it as a daisy chain here to run life support for the console. Not only that, but I also had a gigantic magnifying glass that I would play on this. I would try to play this on longer car rides, except I always got motion sickness, so I would tend to just play this whenever I was home or at the cottage and the TV was in use or anything like that. So just to go through the games that I had on the Sega Game Gear, in no particular order, but again, starting with Sonic games. We have Sonic Triple Trouble. This game was pretty fun overall, but again, it's really hard to see Sonic on the screen. Actually, let me rephrase that. Sonic is huge on the screen and you can't see enough of what's going on because you can't really see what's in front of you, especially for this game right here for Sonic 2 the screen was just not big enough. It wasn't widescreen and it was really hard to react to everything, especially some of the boss fights made it a little bit more challenging overall. There's actually a lot of Sonic games I think on the system. Then we also have Sonic Spinball. No idea why I got this one considering I didn't love it on the Genesis itself. After that we got The Lion King because I loved it on the Genesis so we had to get that one handheld too. And then I have The Adventures of Batman and Robin. I think I picked this one up probably about 10 years ago for a few dollars at a garage sale. Haven't played that one enough, but I think it's a pretty good game overall, of course. And then we have Road Rash Handheld. Again, this is what I remember playing a lot of. Road Rash, which is basically the exact same thing as I described it on the Genesis. Wimbledon Tennis, so I could kind of enjoy and train tennis while I wasn't playing against my brother. Also, NHL Hockey, so much nostalgia for playing this one in handheld mode. Then we have NFL 95. I am a big fan of NFL and watching games, even though obviously there are a lot of injuries and things like that that can kind of occur with NFL, but I love watching. I actually love playmaking and trying to do different plays in those games, especially the fake punt. That's always fun. Then World Series Baseball, not huge into baseball, but I thought I had to pick that one up to at least have a baseball game to enjoy when I was a kid. And a soccer game was really hard to find on the system. So this game is actually not in English. Couldn't even figure out how to transfer the language in English while I was playing it. But I was at least able to start up a game by hitting random buttons and get to it and actually enjoy playing some sort of a soccer game on the go on the game year. So this is my entire collection of Sega stuff that I have right now. I actually did have a Dreamcast, a Sega Sports Dreamcast at some point with Sonic Adventure and Crazy Taxi, I believe, but I have since traded them away. I would love to maybe get more Genesis games. Let me know what I'm missing and what I should probably pick up for the system. And again, let me know what was your very first system that you ever started on and take a look at those sweaters that I mentioned from the website. Thank you so much for watching. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. You guys are fantastic.